Hey guys, right, my um, this session is going to be further journeys into the world of CNC. Uh, the old X carve is having a rest for the moment. I'm in the middle of a project on it, which I'll talk about maybe a little bit later. But I'm going to make a nice clock from my uh, living room to uh, with a little cathedral style uh, case for it, uh, which will sit on top of my. Um, Vintage radio. Um, but today we're on to something new. And so this is a small engraver, which comes from our dear friends, as you can imagine, in the Middle Kingdom. Um, and I'd seen various reviews of this by different people, and all invariably seem to be quite positive, especially for the money. So I thought, let's have a look at this one. It has the great advantage, from my perspective in terms of accuracy, that it uses the proper lead screws with the um, spring-loaded uh, nuts to avoid any backlash problems. And so I'm expecting accuracy out of this to be somewhat better than I get with this guy and the belts and the pulleys. Um, so everything is packed very, very well. So I'm impressed with the packaging. Um, it's got this nice rugged foam, everything is all nicely laid out and well packed. And so I won't bore you with all the construction details because again there's a gazillion of those up on the web in various places. I will just say that this one came with a little CD which has all the software and instructions and how you put it together. So we will follow those and uh, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, the other attraction for this particular one for me is it comes with not only a motor and engraving bits, it also comes with a laser cutter, um, I guess I should say laser engraver. And so um, I'm going to try that first and uh, maybe we'll get the engraving going with the, uh, the motor one later. First we're going to try the laser one. So I'm going to put this thing together. Um, if anything unusual crops up along the way, I'll maybe grab a clip of it. Otherwise, I'll come back when the thing is uh, fired up and ready for some testing. Right, there we go, a couple of hours later, and um, I think we're all together mechanically. Um, I just have to wire up the motors to the controller. I think stick a couple of little heat sinks on the stepper drivers, and we uh, should be good to power up. The whole, the whole Z-axis thing was completely assembled, I didn't have to do anything. It has the motor in it, so I'm going to be replacing that with the on, uh, laser. Um, not quite sure how it's going to fit, I'll figure all that out, because it doesn't have a lot in the documentation. Uh, another reason I went for this particular one is a lot of them come with a standard little collet, or sorry, collar like this which goes on the spindle of the motor and it takes a 1 8 inch shaft uh, engraving bit uh, for a little bit extra I got myself a proper collet chuck would call it with an 8 inch collet in it and of course I can change that for different collets if I want so so far this one has been a far more pleasant experience than the last one I did um, being the uh, 3d printer one um, so this one went to get together nicely and properly uh, accurately machined the pieces. In fact the only pieces I had to uh, to work on were underneath the table. The holders for the linear bearings are 3D printed and guess what I had to sand flat all of the uh, the main surfaces that meet with the bed because there were little irregularities on the print and when you tightened everything down uh, these shafts would not run freely at all. So here we are a day later. Uh, I think the build at this point uh, is all done. Um, so the, uh, the laser is installed, not the motor. Uh, one slight little problem I had is this little board, which I believe is a power supply board for the fan and the laser unit which run on 12 volt versus everything else which is fed by the 24 volt power supply. Uh, this little board 
gave no indication as to where you mount it or how you mount it and I couldn't find any holes to or where I put it. There's no reference to it whatsoever in the documentation that I could find. Um, so I put it here. <laughs> um, what I did was on the side of this heatsink there are two slots which will take an M3 um, bolt and so luckily I had from a previous project some M3 uh, T-slot uh, nuts unfortunately they're the sort that you have to slide in from the edge you can't push them in and rotate them and so what I had to do with these guys is um, file them down uh, to make them thinner uh, just to the point where they'd almost fit and then press them in so that they're in there um, then I didn't have any uh, M3 bolts that were short enough and so I just got some the shortest ones I had and stuck a couple of nuts uh, spacers um, and we're all good uh, on reflection if I was doing it again which I, and I might change it later is I'd probably put it on the lower beam rather than the upper beam um, simply because when the uh, when the carriage comes across here the cable it doesn't actually rub it but it comes very close um, and so that's a change I might make later I was pleased to discover that the uh, the mounting for the uh, motor also had four corners cut out of it so you could actually mount the square um, laser as well so that's nice um, probably the only uh, drawback to the way I've done it right now is uh, I'd have to undo all this cable dressing if I want to take the laser out and put the motor in um, but that's down the road at this point I think we're ready for a software and a power up. Oh, uh, one other complication is um, it comes with a, with a power cable, but uh, it's a Chinese power cable um, with a, uh, a European adapter. I don't think this meets any of our safety uh, standards, so that's out. And I generally tend to avoid using what I would call mains electrical stuff from, uh, from China. Um, just to be safe because <laughs> I think their standards are not like ours um, and in fact I will chop this cable just to see is it double insulated uh, but I doubt I'm going to be using it anyway I'll get something uh, something local guys time to wrap up this particular project for phase one anyway um so yes i got it uh to uh engrave nicely um and so yes overall impressions uh, the mechanical build of this thing is fine i have absolutely no problems with it at all um everything went together quite well um the only little slight challenge was the uh, power supply board for um, for the laser um, how you fit it so I made up my own solution for that hopefully that's okay <laughs> um, I think it's probably fair to say that um, where the whole thing is let down rather badly is with the software so it comes with this piece of software which is not very nice really in fact I think it looks like it comes straight out of the sort of late 80s because you can't even resize this, the, the window I mean when you open it that's the size and you can't do anything with it <laughs> um, so yeah that's a bit of a bummer uh, perhaps more importantly is when it's uh, engraving it's doing it in a sort of raster fashion so it goes line by line by line by line and dot by dot by dot by dot it doesn't take a vector approach to to, to cutting um, the engraving um, so of course it takes ages um, and I think this little Disney dog here 
which you can see is pretty tiny. He took like a, over an hour to uh, to engrave. Um, and uh, yes, so we're gonna have to try and sort that out. Um, I did try some other um, laser software off the net. However, they suffer from one rather dramatic um, problem, which is the minute you connect them um, to the controller, it turns on the laser at full power, 100% duty cycle. And so within about, since this is like a five watt or over a five watt laser, um, you set fire to your bed <laughs> in about three seconds and uh, it's actually on fire. <laughs> so yeah, that's not good. Now I'm under, I understand to fix that requires faffing around with the firmware and the controller, which is a little bit beyond me at the moment, but we'll look into that and see how feasible that is for later. The same applies to the raster uh, method of, uh, of engraving uh, to change that so it will follow a, like a proper toolpath you have to again do some tweaking in the firmware and um, so it uh, does what it says on the tin as they say um, and uh, it works fine in general as I said with the kit itself I have no trouble I think it's fair to say that the the kit is primarily designed to run with the engraving motor st uh, spindle motor and the laser is sort of an add-on um, because, as I said, for the reasons I've just explained, um, <laughs> we have what we'd call systems integration problems. <laughs> so, another one, just which I don't think is that serious, but I noticed that <clears throat> out of this board, you get the pulsed power to the laser, and you get power to the little cooling fan, which sits on top of the laser module. Uh, they're both basically exactly the same. So as well as the laser getting pulsed, the little fan is getting pulsed. But the pulses are so short that you just see the veins of the motor just wiggle. It, the motor here never, this fan never turns. Now, <coughs> this thing did run for an hour uh, to cut the, uh, the little dog. Um, and the laser unit was just totally cold. So I don't know. It, it's not a problem, but it's certainly not. It's certainly weird. So there we go. Um, I hope you found some of this interesting. Um, it's definitely worth a shot, this thing, if you're into this sort of stuff and want to have a go. Um, but yeah, I think if you want to do, uh, uh, if you wanted to cut faster and do more sophisticated things and work at a regular G code and stuff, it's going to require some uh, firmware tweaking uh, with the controller. And uh, I don't know, I might get another controller. The beauty of the thing being open sourced is uh, you can just, uh, it's apparently a clone of a generic Arduino Nano, so uh, it shouldn't be too any problem to look at alternatives. So there we go, guys. Um, nice little gadget, I think. So uh, I'll be playing with it some more. Um, obviously, when you get into serious cutting with this stuff, uh, it generates smoke, and so uh, for, I mean for this it generated almost no smoke at all for, for the little dog But I was trying a very dark one here, which I abandoned simply because it was filling the place up with smoke <laughs> And so I haven't got any extraction facilities rigged up um, So there we go. That's it more on this one um, uh, As and when I get some improvements that are worth reporting back So there we go. I now have a regular CNC X-Carve thingy, which is, you know, for doing the more heavy stuff. I have a 3D printer for doing 3D printing stuff. And I have a laser engraver. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think we'll stop there with the hardware and we'll focus now on learning how to do the software and make these things, all three of them, uh, produce more worthwhile output. All right, guys, more to come soon. Bye for now.